Okay, I am here at Appomattox Courthouse. There is the Wilmer McLean House, and there is the Appomattox Courthouse, the Meeks Home, and the Parole House in the distance. This small village was the site of the end of the American Civil War on April the 9th, 1865, as General Robert Edward Lee and U.S. Grant met in the parlor of Wilmer McLean's house and hammered out the terms of surrender. After the collapse of Petersburg and then Richmond, General Lee headed west with the Union Army in hot pursuit and Sheridan's cavalry riding around them and capturing their last uh, stronghold, which would have been the Appomattox train station where supplies and men were promised. At that time, there were uh, messages between the two generals talking about the possibility of a surrender. And after Lee seeing the desperate situation, decided to meet U.S. Grant in the parlor of this home right here on Easter morning, April 9th, 1865, where officially the American Civil War came to an end. And today we are here at this site.
April 8, 1865. General Robert E. Lee established his headquarters and held his last council of war here along the Richmond Lynchburg Stage Road. The following day, he rode to the McLean House. There, he surrendered the once mighty Army of Northern Virginia to Lieutenant General Ulysses S. Grant. Following the surrender meeting, General Lee made plans for a final farewell to his army. His military secretary, Lieutenant Colonel Charles Marshall, gave the following account. On our return from the interview with General Grant at McLean's house on April 9, 1865, General Lee directed me to prepare a general order to the army appropriate to the occasion. During the rest of the day, I was so constantly occupied with details that I had no time to write the order so that next morning when the general called for it, it was not prepared. He then directed me to get into his ambulance, standing before his tent, and get to work at it at once, and placed an orderly on guard to prevent my being interrupted. As soon as I had made a draft and lead pencil, I submitted it to the general, who struck out a whole paragraph and made some verbal alterations. This was copied and signed by him for corps commanders and staff officers, and many copies were made and issued to the various field commands to be read. General Order Number 9, Headquarters, Army of Northern Virginia, April 10, 1865. After four years of arduous service, marked by unsurpassed courage and fortitude, the Army of Northern Virginia has been compelled to yield to overwhelming numbers and resources. I need not tell the brave survivors of so many hard-fought battles who have remained steadfast to the last that I have consented to the result from no distrust of them. But feeling that valor and devotion could accomplish nothing that would compensate for the loss that must have attended the continuance of the contest, I determined to avoid the useless sacrifice of those whose past services have endeared them to their countrymen. By the terms of the agreement, officers and men can return to their homes and remain until exchanged. You will take with you the satisfaction that proceeds from the consciousness of duty faithfully performed. And I earnestly pray that a merciful God will extend to you his blessing and protection. With an increasing admiration of your constancy and devotion to your country, and a grateful remembrance of your kind and generous considerations for myself, I bid you all an affectionate farewell. R. E. Lee, General. Two days later, on April 12th, four years to the day after the firing on Fort Sumter, Veterans of the Army of Northern Virginia stacked their arms, received their paroles, and began the journey home.